How's it going today YouTube and welcome back to Shaner's Mechanic Life. Today I got a Garrett VGT turbocharger here. VGT stands for Variable Geometry Turbo. What they do is under low speed it restricts the exhaust flow through the turbo which increases turbine power and boost pressure. Then at high speeds the vanes open which maximizes exhaust flow, avoids turbo overspeed and maintains the required boost pressure. The problem with this one is we've got a leak in the turbine housing as you can see right there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to open it up, show you guys what's on the inside and give you a brief description on how it works. Anyway, here we go. So mounted on the center section of the turbo you've got this actuator. This is your vane position sensor. This is a solenoid that actuates the vanes and the computer will tell it what position it wants to go in. Now all these parts are mounted inside the turbine housing. So I'm gonna remove this clamp, take it apart, and show you what's inside. Now before you take it apart, you wanna mount it in a vise with the turbine or the exhaust side down because all the moving parts are inside the turbine. So once you get this clamp off, you lift the impeller in the center section up, all the guts should stay down in the bottom. If you do it the other way around, it's just gonna be a mess all over the floor. So just get your clamp out of the way. And it's probably gonna be carboned up inside, which kinda of bind the two halves together. So just a little jiggle and wiggle and maybe even a little, a little tap with a hammer to break it free. Just a tap, you don't wanna beat on it and cause more damage. So, once you get that off, lift that section out, lay it down on your workbench. Now that the two have separated on the bench, you can see here, this is what your actuator turns. And here's the lining dowel, which goes into this part of the center housing, or turbine, sorry. And that actuator goes into here. And when that solenoid moves it, you can see those vanes will change position, which changes the speed of the turbo and changes the boost. Now, a lot of times what happens is these get all carboned up and they stick and they get damaged if you get debris going through there. But this one was operational. Only problem was the exhaust leak, which is coming through where that shaft for the actuator goes in. So we'll be sending this one up to the turbo shop, see if they got any parts they can replace with it and save us some money. That way we don't have to replace the entire turbo. So if you take yours apart, Check the turbine wheel, you don't see any damage, there's no oil leakage, no play or anything like that. And your problem is these hanging up. Provided there's no damage or excessive wear, you can take it apart and clean it. Now before you pull this apart, you want to make sure these line up when you go to put it back together again. So you can never go wrong with making some marks. Then you can Lift your ring off, check it for any wear, get some Varsol, carb cleaner, whatever you want. Just give them a toothbrush, a wire brush, something, clean it up. And then check all these. Make sure they're all free, no wear. That all looks good. If yours are gummed up or hanging up, you're going to have some issues. So give it a good cleaning. And provided you caught it soon enough, you should be able to put it back together and be fully operational. Now another common problem is the electrical end of it. That actuator, the electrical connection, as well as the vane position sensor mounted right in the center section of the turbo. It's subjected to a lot of heat. And if it gets too hot, these pieces will overheat and the electrical portion of them will fail. Or you might even see some burnt wires, melted connectors. 
and even discoloring of the housing. So once I get this back from the turbo shop, I'll get them to check out the whole thing regardless, and I'll let you know what it costs to repair it, and then compare it to the cost of the new turbo. I guarantee you, we're gonna save a bunch of money here. So just take your time. Eyeball everything as you go back in and drop it on. I might take a little bit of a little bit of moving around, but you'll feel it drop into place. Now I usually eyeball the actuator first, get that roughly in the right spot, and once you get that in, a lot of times you can just give it a little twist and it'll fall onto the dowel. Just a little jiggling. You can feel it drop down in the spot. Now you can put your clamp back on and start the reassembly process. Okay, we got our turbo back from the turbo shop. Like I said, I sent it out. They checked everything over, cleaned everything as you can see. It looks like a brand new turbo. Ended up replacing the solenoid, fixing the exhaust leak. And they checked everything else over. Everything else looked good. Checked out fine. And the final bill came in at just under 500 bucks. Now if you price out a brand new OEM one, you're looking at 25, 2600 bucks. And even a reman one, you're still looking at between 1000 to 2200 bucks depending on where you go. So it definitely pays to send it out, get it checked. You know, might not be as bad as you think. You might be able to fix it for a heck of a lot cheaper than buying a new one. Now as you take the turbo off, start undoing all the piping and stuff like that, you want to do what I do. Make sure you plug up all the holes. Don't need anything fancy, some rags, or even a glove over the air to air. And just before you put the turbo on, take your rags, unplug everything, make sure there's no debris that's fallen in. You know, blow it out with a compressed air or even a vacuum cleaner, suck everything out. The last thing you want to do is be uh, throwing debris through your either your new turbo or your rebuilt or your repaired. Now I'm going to give you a few tips on what to do before you fire this thing up for the first time after you get it bolted on. Once you got it bolted onto the engine and most of your hardware hooked up, what you want to do is go to your oil inlet. You want to fill this with new clean engine oil. Spin your compressor wheel a little bit. Make sure it coats all the bearings on the inside and then go and top it up again. Now you can go ahead, hook up your oil feed line and you're not quite ready to start it yet. What you want to do is disable the fuel system first. So that way you want to be able to crank it for a good 15 seconds or watch your, your oil pressure gauge until you get full oil pressure. Now you think it's all ready to go, go ahead, give everything a double check all your connections, all your nuts and bolts, make sure you haven't forgotten anything. And then go ahead and fire it up. Just let it idle, you know, five, 10 minutes. The last thing you wanna do is fire it up right away and just put your foot to the floor. As it's idling, just give it a good visual, listen to it. Do you hear any exhaust leaks? Look for any fluid leaks. If everything looks good from then on, Go ahead, take it for a small test drive. Come back, double check it, and you should be good to go. Well, I hope you found this video helpful, entertaining, and informative. Just want to end this video by thanking all my new subscribers. Bigfoot80, thanks for subscribing. Appreciate all my subscribers. Let me know what you think in the comments section. Hit that like button to subscribe. I got more videos coming. Anyway, have a good night everybody. And thanks for watching.